Hi everybody, welcome to I Dream in Soap. My name's Lisa. Today I thought I'd do a little video on how do you work out how much soap to make to fill a mold. Now it may be the case that perhaps you've got a brand new mold or maybe you've got some weird shape mold that you've not used before and you want to make sure that you have enough soap. You know that situation where sometimes perhaps you've poured your soap and there's not enough so you end up with those ridiculously short bars or perhaps more commonly, you end up making too much soap and you end up having some overspill that you have to put into some extra bars that you didn't really want in the first place. So hopefully we're going to solve that today. Now, when we deal with this, there's actually two things that we need to consider. First of all, we would need to work out the volume of our mould. And then secondly, we need to work out how much soap we need to put into it. So volume, first of all, now, there can be some maths involved in this, but unfortunately, you're kind of not going to get away with that. But we're going to try and keep it as straightforward as possible. The volume can be done in two ways. Now, the first way which we're going to go over is the nice, straightforward, easy way, which avoids as much maths as possible. Now, this works when you've got the type of mould that you can fill with some water. So this, you know, your typical, very basic mould. This was my very first ever mould. <laughs> um, this type of mould would work well, or oh, this also works really well if you've got some like weird old shaped mould. Um, but let's face it, that would be really difficult to try and actually measure the volume of that. So filling with water, nice and easy. Now what I would always recommend is getting yourself some sort of tray or something um, to put your mould on top of, and clearly some scales. So we need to weigh the water weight. So we're going to pop everything on our scales. Now, when you fill your mould with water, you want to make sure that you actually fill it up to where you want your soap to be. There's no point filling it right to the top if you're not going to make soap to that um, height. Now, what I've done in mine, I don't know if you can see it, you probably can't. I've said, well, what if I make, want to make, this mould is basically seven centimetres wide. What if I wanted to make a seven by seven centimetre soap bar? So I've just done, I don't know if you can see that little red dot. I've actually done it on some sticky tape so I can peel it off. On there just to put that at the height that I actually want and then I need to make sure I've got everything to zero and then we're just going to fill our mould with our water do, 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 do. a bit more water Okay, and I've got to my seven centimetre line, and I don't know if you can see what that reads, whether the camera is showing it up, but it's saying I've got 1,289 grams of water. Okay, so I'm going to note that down. Now, obviously, if you're used to dealing with ounces, then you could measure that water in ounces and do exactly the same thing. Okay, so it's just nice and straightforward. Now, this is where the tray comes in really useful. Certainly with this type of mould, it's not too much of a problem. You can just pick that up and get rid of it. But if you've got like a wibbly wobbly mould, again, pop it on your tray, make sure everything's teared out. And again, just fill those moulds up. You could just literally just do the one and then go, right, I've got one of those, I'm gonna multiply it by six or you can fill up all six, and then that will tell you how much water weight you've got. And this is where, as I said, the tray is really useful, because obviously you can now actually pick up the tray, try and pick up the wibbly wobbly moulds full of water, <laughs> it's gonna get everyone wet. So you can now pick up that tray and empty that out. So having done that, we now know the weight in water that we've got, whether we've done it in grams or ounces, so we're nice and sorted there. What if you've got a mould that you can't fill with water? Um, so let's say, for example, my little slab mould that I made here. Now, when I made it, I made a liner to go with it. So I could, in theory, fill it with water. But let's say you've just got like a normal metal mould. Metal? <laughs> Wood mould. The one the ones you, you line with freezer paper. So we're actually going to have to measure this one. And the same with... Let's say we just had a nice little loaf mould um, that we normally line with freezer paper. We're actually going to have to measure this one. And measuring is, it's literally just measuring, isn't it? So to measure our moulds, we're just going to make sure you measure the internal bits of the mould. 
because that's where you get your soap's going to go. So therefore, if I go through and I measure my um, mould, I'm sure you don't need me to show you how to actually do some measuring. I could, with my loaf mould, measure it and I can just pop down my dimensions. Now my loaf mould in centimetres comes to seven centimetres wide by seven centimetres high because that's how high I want my soap by 26.2 centimetres long. And if I go through and measure that in inches, for those of you that use inches, the same sort of thing coming through in my inches, that will give me 2.75 inches by 2.75 inches by 10.3 inches. Okay, so having got those measurements, I can now use that to work out my volume. I'm just going to swap to um, my computer now so we can just look at these measurements probably in a bit of a better screen. Um, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so we're back and I'm now on my computer. Um, and what you can see is I've done is I've just written on my screen the sizes that we worked out, didn't we, when we actually went through and measured that loaf mould. So we've got my individual sizes. Now, I'm sure many of you know how to work out a volume, but just in case you don't, you just need to multiply all three of those dimensions. So the width, the height and the length, just multiply them through together. And if you go through and do that, I'm going to do both of them just so whether you're working in centimetres or inches, then you've got those measurements. In the centimetres, that would come to a volume of 1284. And for inches, that would come to a volume of 77.89 inches. Try to not round up too much at this point, you know, if you can help it. OK, so now we've got our volume. We now need to start thinking about the weight that we need for measuring out our oils because that's how we're going to weigh them. So let's think about weight. Now, when we deal with our weight, the brilliant thing about if you're someone that use is centimetres and grams, as far as we're concerned, um, the volume when you're looking at something um, and will actually give us the correct number of grams. So that volume, that one, two, eight, four centimetres, will give us the same as one, two, eight, four grams. Hey, 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 good for us. With our gam grams, less maths to be doing. Okay. Now, with our inches, unfortunately, not quite the same. So to actually get our inches into ounces we do need to multiply them now there is a slight weirdness between ounces and fluid ounces um, slightly different um, now what I found is if you use something like soap calc that's what I use and I'm sure a lot of people use and there's lots of other soap calculators and lie calculators out there um, they use normal ounces um, for that rather than fluid ounces so to get that into what we need you just need to take your volume that you've got and multiply it by 0.58 and that will now give you what you need in ounces so that is going to be 45 ounces okay so that's the bit of maths that you're going to have to remember to multiply it by 0.58 and that will now give you your ounces now the next step, now this is something you don't necessarily need to do, so if you're thinking, I don't want any more maths than I need, then ignore this step, don't worry about it at all. Okay. Just bear in mind that oil is lighter than water, so therefore when you make up your batter, the density of it is actually different. So if you literally go along with the pure water weight, you'll be slightly short on your oils it's only a tiny amount. So to be honest, you might just want to just do the calculations as they are and then just add on a tiny bit at the end or not even bother about it. So this is not a major thing. But for the perfectionists out there, if you then to get your batter, now the relative density, <laughs> gosh, of all our batter and lye and everything is 0.9 compared to our water. So we basically want to make we want to make the amount of stuff bigger because our water is heavier. So how we do that is we take our 1284 for my grams or my 45 ounces for my ounces 
and divide it. Now the natural tendency here is everyone wants to multiply it by 0.9. Remember you want to make this bigger so divide it by 0.9 because I want more oil than my water weight and if I work that out that now comes to my 1427 grams that I want or my 50 ounces. Okay, so I now know how much batter, soap batter, is going to fit into my soap mould. And again, the next problem here that we've got is, is that is the total amount that's going to fit into my soap mould. I need to now work out my oils. Now, if you know with your recipe what percentage of it is oils, then great, you can go ahead and do it straight away. But what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, I don't know, that's total batter. How do I work out my oils? Let's go and do that. Now, I'm just going to pop into soap calc because that's the um, lie calculator that I use. So let's imagine we've got our soap calculator here. And you've got a recipe. So maybe you found this recipe on the internet, um, you're running it through a lie calculator, um, or maybe it's your standard recipe that you use. So it's a recipe that you've got, but it just doesn't fit this mold. Okay, so I've just literally plopped up a recipe um, in here. So we're not analyzing how great this recipe is or anything. That's something you can do on another day. Okay, so we've got our recipe, and as you can see, I've just loaded the recipe into soap calc, and this recipe that we had um, it had as you can see in the little weight section it's got 2000 grams of oil that we're using so we want to take this recipe and work out what I need to put in my loaf so if you go through and do your normal things for soap calc you calculate your recipe and then you view or print your recipe now, if you're unsure about using soap calc, um, Terry from Tree Marie Soapworks has done some brilliant um, videos on using soap calc, so do make sure that you check those out. Um, this is not, again, the tutorial using soap calc. We then get in and you can see we can now print our recipe. So what I've now done is I've just literally grabbed my recipe and made it nice and big so we can see. And the figures that you're interested in dealing with are, we know that those total weights of oils that we had were the 2000. Okay, you'll also find that. Oh, no point, I was going to highlight it in orange there when it's orange. There we go, our 2,000, a couple of places that you're going to find out. And the other thing you want is you want your total soap weight. So you can see this random recipe that, that we grabbed was 2,776 grams. If you're doing ounces, it was 97 grams, sorry, 97.94 ounces. So to work out the figure that we need, we need to do ourselves a percentage calculation. So yeah, unfortunately we do have a little bit more mass, but we need to know the amount of oils. And once you know this, if this for example is your standard recipe, once you know this figure, you always know it. You know, and I always use my figure all the time, whenever I'm working out how much soap I need, I know that um, what my standard percentage is. So to do that, we know we take our total oils, which we know are 2,000, and we want to divide those by the total batter weight, so 2776.43. If you're doing in ounces, obviously you're going to use those figures that are in ounces. Okay, so hopefully you can see where I've been grabbing those figures from. And if you do those and times them by 100, a squishy little 100 in there, you will actually get your percentage. So 2000 divided by 2776.43. And that tells me that is 72%. And obviously it will be 72% for both of them. Now, I typically soap at 25% um, of oils, of sort of water to oils, and so my percentage I use does tend to be 72%. Um, 
with that so that's no surprise but obviously if you use more water in your recipe you're going to find that percentage changes it's going to actually be lower if you use less water then that percentage will be higher but now we've got the magic figure doo -doo 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 -doo, that's 72 we can now use it to get how much we want in our mold So what I've just done there in the fetching pink colour on the bottom there is I've taken where we'd got to. We'd got to the blue bits, hadn't we, where we'd got our amount in grams or ounces. I then need to times those by 72%, so times by 0.72 or do times 72% on your calculator. And this is now what we've got here, the amount of um, oils that we actually need. Okay, so these are our oils. And these are the figures you can now go and grab and pop into soap calc to actually get the perfect amount for your mold okay so back into soap calc we know didn't we that we wanted our oils to be 1027 grams so we can pop those into the weight of oils thing that you enter and it doesn't matter so if you've got that in ounces then you put in those 36 ounces that we calculated under the ounces tab don't you don't forget to go and do calculate your recipe and you can check that figure at the bottom there will come to 1027 and then if we do view print our recipe as normal We're going to end up with our amounts. And if we just have a look at those amounts, look, there was our oils, didn't we, that we calculated those oils, either your 36 grams, sorry, 36 ounces of oils or your 1027 grams. And look, when we get that total weight of our soap, it's come to those figures that you want. Remember your mold, we said held 50 ounces of oils or 142, I think we said 1426 grams of oil. So we're pretty close there, aren't we? So therefore that's given you your figures. And if it's now a mold that you're gonna use fairly regularly, write those figures down somewhere, you know, or save your soap count recipes with the standard amount that you actually use and you won't have to go through this palaver again until you buy a, a weirdly shaped mold for Halloween or something. Anyway, so that's how you get all your figures. I know there's a bit of maths involved. The more times that you do it, the better that you'll actually get at it. And, you know, it's better than constantly having not enough or too much soap. Okay, so I hope everyone found that useful um, and happy measuring and maths for everyone.